Job done. We got the hustler. <laughs> yeah. Four grand. <laughs> Hang on a siren controller. Look. Wow. Come inside and you look at this dash. This is it. This is the one for you. Look, peg for the choke. Classic. Kenzel clock. AKA Dolomite Stag and used to spot that Kinzel clock there, look. See Sally. Pods bit of dash speakers, lever knob, full glass laminate, blind spot mirror there, lock 25, yours for 4K. <laughs> Cuddly toy on the dash. Actually would actually be an annoying rattle that wouldn't it? You wouldn't put that the worst rattling than Ruby. Oh, there's the mirror. I was going to say, I want the mirror from buying it. Thank you very much. No, it's, it's... Wow. Don't hustle. Just don't hustle with me, baby. <laughs>
any high tension connectors such as your spark plugs or if you've got connectors in the engine bay that may be subject to any water ingress for example the connector on the bottom of your headlamp relay often suffers corrosion this stuff's great for holding that back at bay and your battery terminals as well it'll work on dielectric grease is good stuff various chunky cables some 75 amps some uh, 25s all different types of rating cable to build this loom that we're going to be doing <clears throat> so look forward to building that loom so the service from them was quick this stuff ordered in the afternoon was here in the morning that's fast um, yeah very good and, pretty, and we just went through everything over the phone I didn't really know exactly everything I was going to be needing from the 12 volt boys but I'm sure I'll be ordering from them again I was impressed with the service so they're worth checking out for all your electrical stuff and more go on the website and have a look around because there's a lot of stuff I, I've not had a chance to scroll through and look at anything to do with 12 volts there you boys okay so we're going to move on to that radio conversion clear the bench or we might even have a play with that cruise control unit and see next part of the video I'm not sure what I'm going to be filming so just let's just see what happens because it's all unfolding but everything's going well Okie dokie, so workshop tip tidy. Everything here we can do, we can go whatever direction we want now. It's all electrical. We can pick any path. I'm waiting for bolts to come in, galvanized bolts to come in so we can start the clip build. So use available time, all parts on the shelf so we know how organized we are and what we need and what we don't need. Nice and warm in here. So the road ahead of us, we can pick any direction we want. Let's do something. Okay, it's time to talk radio conversions. With the workshop and electronics bench getting well stocked and ready for business, albeit a little bit untidy, not too bad. And a dashboard over there on its jig and on its wheels, like I said. And the engine is in. I can just run around. <laughs> yeah! Wait a minute. Please! <laughs> yeah! Wow! Oh, simple things for simple minds. Jim Kerr's gonna love it. The engine arrives in from Gem. What a gem! What a gem! It's look at that jacket. It looks like they've actually painted inside the engine all the way. I mean, the detail, just the pure detail of and the quality of the build on the engine gives us something to behold I'm sure that you're gonna agree that it's just a beautiful piece of work including the cylinder head on the um, made a little dolly these dollies from machine mark look underneath there so I can just place the shipping pallet on it and then move this around revealing the cylinder head here now some gasket sets too there's the head what a beauty, let's roll it over, shift these gaskets and just I think it's got a protective card underneath it so we can't really see, we'll have to wait till that gets unboxed however we could just have a little poke about it's beautiful, I don't even want to unwrap it, it's too good there's a host of stuff for the engine arriving a fuel tank's in there, that's been in for a while um, an engine bench over there is good, that's been built up again on casters uh, ready to uh, do any work we have to do. I'm going to make a little inlay board. I'm surprised it didn't come with it from Machine Mart so that we don't scratch this paint surface and that we only use the paint surface when we really need to. But that's going to be handy for, for building stuff up because I'm going to put a, a nice hardwearing board there. It'd be nice to have a board with a metal, a metal plate on top. So I'm going to get one of them made up and drop it on and you've got a kind of like quite a sturdy workbench you can hammer stuff on it and then perhaps we could have a lift off handle so you could lift it up and place the board to one side just to give that a little bit more feature it gives a storage shelf there look how the gearbox nicely rolls underneath again everything's on wheels including me so a little quick review rounds nice and warm in here beautiful 21 degrees because this floor is like toast oh yeah what a payoff that was now then let's get to business here you've got a 
Blaupunkt Hamburg radio 1973 model all right controls there for logoed up on its display this is they normally have a blue dot in the middle of the uh, indicator certainly on the early ones and Blaupunkt in German I think it's blue point or blue spot Blau is definitely blue for German punked is point I think so blue point and that's why you often see the little dot there and that lights up when you power up the set we might do not on this depends if the bulb is functioning but it, that doesn't really matter for now what we've got is this set I think it's a five watt set and looking at the back there your earth tab electric aerial connection and the main power feed and then this little cassette adapter that you can take out at the moment with this little plug fitted the radio behaves normally uh, long wave and medium wave radio if I pull this plug out it removes a little link pin you can just about see the link pin there oh it's got a screwdriver and point it out that's a little link pin and you could have a cassette player and if you did you'd pull this out this would now disconnect the radio signal that is the amplifier input so if I, if I if this was switched on and I pre I touched that with especially with a, a finger that was damp it'd buzz it'd like zzzz. is that a good buzz impression no and that pin is the actual radio signal so what happens is at the moment with this fitted all it does is the radio signal comes out into these pins and back into the amplifier when you take the plug out you actually disconnect the amplifier from the radio signal it's at this point you could now put any signal you wanted any low line uh, line level signal into that and it would then act just as an amplifier you'd be able to use the normal um, volume control on the set but it would be an amplifier so when you had your cassette deck, your Blaupunkt cassette deck, you'd pull this out, plug the cassette deck into here, which was a remote deck that went under the dash, and then in the deck itself it had a switch which would feed the radio signal through the cassette deck. If the cassette deck was off, it would bring that radio signal back where it should be onto the amplifier. If you switch the cassette on, it would interrupt the radio signal, put the signal from the cassette into the amp. So that's what this is that's good but we can use that facility to put this on this is an mp3 player it's all on the one little circuit board with a memory card and a usb stick and with some buttons to press play pause scan or mode it'll connect to bluetooth to your phone fm radio line in jack 3.5 jack your headphone your iphone headphone socket if you wanted it usb memory card by using these buttons we can control the source, so Bluetooth, input, volume control, etc. So the plan to do the radio conversion is this. We'd like it to work by using these buttons to control these buttons. So that this would be my track jump, my mode button to select Bluetooth, MP3 stick, radio, FM radio that is. Because this has got medium wave and long wave, but it doesn't have FM. However, this has FM, so you can now make this an FM radio by using these buttons to control it. At the moment, they're not connected to this, but we're going to make a circuit so that they are connected to the player. Don't need to concern ourselves with that side of the set. Flip it over, lift this lid off in the set. We're going to lift this lid off the top, and we're going to solder in what we call micro switches let's go across and get the micro switches out just flip this lid out of there inside is an assortment of we're going to use these type of micro switches soldered onto a little bit of what you call vero board the vero board is just lots of copper tracks with holes in for building circuits you can see some resistors components fitted in there but we're going to put switches on here and we're going to line these micro switches up luckily with the long rods the push rods that are inside the radio that, that push in and out so we're going to use those push rods to activate these switches so that when i do that i'm actually doing this and these pins are soldered across the pins of these switches so that that button emulates that switch effectively giving us a wired remote control system for the mp3 then we take the signal from it and bring it into that pin we talked about there okay we need a little relay to toggle the uh, to simulate the cassette deck switch over 
put that set. I'll show you that in a minute. First, we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is solder on in the right positions the micro switches to fit into this deck. Now that will require me breaking the Vero board to the right size and placing it in. I'll show you what I mean now. What I can do is put you on the tripod and we can uh, look at it, or you can look at it from overhead. And together we'll go through the first stage of this radio conversion, which is getting the remote control system up and running. There's a few other things we need to modify on it as well. We need to get a bit of a brighter illumination on its panel because the typical bulb doesn't really do much. So we're going to increase the brightness with some LEDs out of view just using refracted light from them but just giving us a bit of a brighter display that's for later on it's tripod time for you okay lid off first a little bit of a, a leverage and now bring the light in a little bit closer for you there you go can see there's an area here we can use on this particular set anyway so I'm gonna get the Vero and just see we need to put a little piece of board in it's gonna be somewhere around there like that. that's all you gotta do and then the width of it width wise around there something like that maybe a little bit less one more down so we're just gonna get that just to fit where we want going to sit probably underneath so I want to go one down off screen there we are that should be just about right and then we're going to lay put some supports on that that's going to lay in there the micro switches will rest just on top of it we'll line them up you'll see the push rods coming in and how if we get this right, the micro switch is placed in position. Each push on the rod will activate the switch. And that's how I'm going to do it. So we'll jump to that setup now. We just solder these in. We're actually going to work with it that way up. The copper tracks here will correspond with the pins. We'll bend these pins and solder them in the exact right position so that each one's spaced out just right to fit under there. So we're going to make ourselves a little switchboard. It'll need some standoff legs to sit in here, which we can make. We'll find something that's about the right size out of plastic because we've got circuit board there. We don't have anything metal anywhere near it. Leave that with me. I'll build you now a little circuit controller. I'll say circuit controller, just a board with the switches on. Here we go. That's a bit worrying. Hope you're not superstitious. In fact, that doesn't even come under the realms of superstition. It's under the realms of religion. I am maiden, please. Okay, I told you I'd get some switches in there, and we now have the switchboard in to the set. Four micro switches just along on some Vero board there. Vero board. I don't know if I've said this before, it's a sort of do-it-yourself circuit board, but you can use it for mounting switches if you want, you don't have to have a circuit on it. You can break it to any shape that you like. A little toggle switch there to give us power to the MP3 module just here. Now you could, if you really were going for it, install the MP3 module, there's just enough room to get it inside the set so you wouldn't have to have an external device however if you ever want to upgrade this or something went wrong it's easier not to have to take the radio out so we're going to remote remotely mount this in a project box and extend the cables so that they come into the set now to control it we're going to have four switches there plus the power switch so um, we've got 12 volts already in on board the set itself so we can just hook up 12 volts to this little switch which will then send 12 volts out to our module and power it up when that switch pushes in at the same time it will flip a relay which will toggle the audio input at the same time so we'll get a full switching operation then these buttons will control the fast forward pause reverse and mode switch of this unit 
Uh, looking at the contacts of the switches on the back of the unit, they're quite easy to get to, so we can piggyback those across these switches here. So that's, for now, does that area of the radio. Moving to the front of it, they have one little filament bulb that lights them up, lights up that face plate, and it works off refraction in the perspex so the bulb the perspex catches a certain point inside where the bulbs mounted and then that sends the light through into the perspex itself rather than backlighting it it tends to be sending the light through the perspex so <clears throat> we're going to replace the bulb with leds but we need we need to make sure that the leds land in the right place because the characteristics are different than a filament leds are more directional certainly the early type of LEDs is quite a directional lamp so we want to make it so that when we arrange the LEDs in here a little cluster we'll build that they catch the perspex so it's trial and error to get it we don't want it too bright either and we also need a power lamp in here which tells us that the MP3 is receiving 12 volts so that basically you know that you've got your MP3 active otherwise it's hard to know if you're actually on the physical radio or the MP3 so an indicator lamp it's really essentially connected onto the output of that toggle so when that toggle goes across becomes 12 volts it's all not only does it power the mp3 remotely it will also tell us on the front that it's on that switch is in the on position it's just a handy diagnostic really so that's where we're at we've got to open this front up which we we do by just a little nut spinner and we're going to take off the front panel to get to the bulb itself which I think in this set is oh I'm gonna need two hands I think in this set the bulb's gone but it's to come out anyway and we just put in a cluster of LEDs they just don't get as hot they last longer and a slightly crisper sharper lamp now it doesn't look as factory as your little filament bulb I suppose but I think it's an improvement in this case anyway Okay, if we really wanted to do a concourse radio restoration, we wouldn't be converting it anyway, and we'd put the filament bulb in. But I think those LED bulbs, there's uh, arguments to and against them, for and against them. I don't know if you can get an LED bulb that directly goes in the socket of this bulb. I haven't seen any. You probably can, and it would be better just to put that type of bulb in. Um, but I can make up with my LEDs, anything that I want. So I'm gonna, in this instance, make up with my own LEDs, but you could just put your own fine on those. They're only a miniature bulb in here, forget the T code for the bayonet base. It's a bayonet bulb, it'll be TS something for the size of the uh, base. And you could put your own LED lamp in if you were doing this, or if you're just fixing the radio and not doing MP3, just wanna keep it as original as you can, filament or replacement type LED. But for me, I'll make my own little miniature cluster of those LEDs and then we'll get them fitted inside here and then give this a little clean up and then that should be that area done, all the buttons seem to work and then we can continue on with powering up the set and getting the MP3 wired into it and test it. We want to make everything on connectors so when we turn it round to the back we've got an antenna connection, that's fine we've got a DIN plug here for the audio line signal that's fine spade connectors there Luke cars so one wire coming out we have to drill this and put a little grommet in here and that's our the multifunction controllers the switches the micro switches they need a little socket plug we could use molex or we could use uh, inline din sockets i'll see what i've got in stores but we need to put a plug on the back of this so it can be taken out the dash if it needed to be serviced so a few things to do before we finish on this and then we can move on to testing and notes if you're pulling one of these apart all right I use just a little blade in at the top here between those little tangs and it'll flip this display out from its bottom connections its bottom tangs that comes out so a little blade just to get in to those between those two little slots there and you can flip out the front then wind the station indicator all the way to the left hold on let's show you that without my big hands getting in the way this is station indicator wind all the way to the left I'm just showing you how to get in here and then you can see a little tuning screw there just be wary of that that's for tuning in your aerial exactly uh, we'll talk about that later there's a little 
tag at the side now here just let's see if we can get you on it just there we're going to push that in and that flips out the internal face of the uh, the dial and you can hook it out underneath you just hook it out underneath the the indicator so it sort of goes in and down and out like that we're going to get that out now okay this is the layout of the leds we've got that little dial uh, face out by just hooking it out I talked about just hooking it out from underneath the, the indicator there you can see it's got a little bit of red sort of tape over it for the to make the LED sorry the, to make the, the indicator on the original radio red bulb fits at the back bulb goes through this diffuser color diffuser just gives it a sort of bluey green tint so that's how they used to do it you can see how the, the hot bulbs melted that and that's what happens with them they break down so our LEDs lay out like this a little bit <coughs> excuse me a little bit unclear on the the, the creaminess of the uh, tabletop here the LEDs start to become a little bit invisible and we can just about see them so we lay them we point they're pointing at each other like this and it might, might look a crazy setup but that LED shines up that end that one goes up that end these two just bolster it and we just got to bounce the light around a little bit and probably just point them up a little touch and we run them just at about three quarters power but we'll be able to change the, the brightness of these to suit what we think is about right you could even fit a, a, a a nighttime dimming function but I don't think it's necessary in daylight running the set can be seen without being backlit it's not one of those displays that needs particularly to be backlit and indeed when it's uh, <clears throat> the ones I've done in the past you can't really tell that they're lit until the evening time and there's no real need to this um, perspex face is perfectly legible in normal daylights there's no need but it is good to see the indicator on so you know the sets receiving power and the fuse is okay so we do want to make that light up visible in daylight and if we need to we can dim down for a, a side light connection and have a little dimming circuit built we'll talk about that so these LEDs I'm arranging them in this configuration sort of firing at each other and bouncing off each other to try and scatter the light if you just Put them in in just one LED there. All it does is just create one localized area of light and doesn't make the the refraction, the total internal refraction effect that you'd get on this perspex needs to sort of be hit at the edges. So we'll try that arrangement. Could be too many bulbs perhaps, um, but they don't draw any cu much current. <clears throat> a few milliamps each. Got to connect wires to them now, and each each needs a series resistor. They, they mustn't be connected straight to 12 volts LEDs. You've got to run them through what you call a series resistor. In our case, 560 ohms onto each one. You could have one resistor running all four, but you overload the resistors. These are quarter watt. It's best to have an individual resistor. Then if one resistor goes, you don't lose the whole lot. So I'm going to connect a resistor to each LED leg and then common ground up the other pins. It's going to be a little bit intricate. Little jumper leads and wires will go in. Then we've got to pack it all into this. But it's, uh, it's doable because I've done it before. I'll get on and solder all that up for you and we'll, we'll try it uh, on some 12 volts and see how it lights up. Okay, coming to your screen now, just attaching the, the power wires to the LEDs, just soldered those up. And now we've just got the, the feed cables going in. So I'm just going to twist those around to make a neater sort of double cable, if you will. Just bringing them round like that, those tails, you see those tails basically twisting two wires together. Okay, we're ready to test this now. 12 volts to this, we should be lighting up. Okay, we're on, up and running there. So I'm going to work out if it'll just nicely slot into the the enclosure should do because I've done it as I say I've done this on another set and it worked very nicely we have to see which way round does this go this way uh, that's at the front that's at the back so that goes in like this and then we slot this into there built just to fit there you go 
Hopefully, I've not done that for a bit. There you go. In we are. Now, hopefully, that'll bounce enough light around to give us a much better illumination than the original set had. I always thought they were a bit dull. The uh, the dial illumination on these, although with a nice decent bulb in there, they can look kind of like retro with the, the glow of the filament. We'll lose that, of course, but for what I want to do, this is how I'm happy. So I'm wind that gauge uh, dial indicator right to the left there, and then this turns around. We have to thread the cable through. But just showing you that you hook that under carefully under the the dial and then clip in and you'll see it's already starting to bounce light around in there look so it looks like we're gonna work and with that blue um, paper uh, translucent material it gives it a little bit of a hue it's not as harsh as the the bulbs might have been so we're ready for installing that whether or not it's lighting up this it doesn't look to me, look, see how that's not lighting up that indicator there. Because there's no direct light on it. So really that needs something on there. We could put our own LED on. Whoops, I've knocked you over, I've knocked you over. We could put our own LED on there, we need to look at it. But I would rather it just to be lit off this. I don't think we can actually get anything. Look, it's just not going to... I mean it is if you're in total darkness you'd get red on that but as it stands in daylight look we're not going to get anything showing through there so we need to address that situation I know that I've pointed those LEDs away from each other but that's to bounce the light where we need it they have to do that so really we need one more LED over that so I'm going to fit that now um, now on the other set I drilled another hole here and had the second indicator as the um, as the uh, mp3 power on indicator you could just use this single one and have it brighter for when it's on mp3 so half power for normal radio and then it brightens up for mp3 I don't know what to do leave this with me because I'm going to give this a little bit of a little bit of thought okay we're powered up and we've got a little bit of epoxy resin glue that goes clear just to hold the LEDs in place and diffuse the light even more giving us a nice little light band I've twisted the cables and now start to thread them through the front the LED you can see there in red the secondary LEDs added the power LED for the mp3 player if you turn the power off to that it actually goes white so it does act as a dual indicator so we should be okay there we just hopefully it will refract the light into the perspex like this so we only really know when we put it all together and get it into a dark room I'm going to use a blanket and just cover over this with a blanket and we can see if it's worked a bit late if it hasn't worked because it's all set now really so we've got to keep our fingers crossed on this one but I'm going to put the radio back together just so you can see how I'm working I've got a nice overhead work lamp here which helps me do any detailed uh, soldering and get in my eyes aren't as good as they were but I've got very focal glasses so I can see but uh, it's easier with this and probably use these anyway even when my eyes were, 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 were good and um, the magnifier was always used uh, from early days of me doing electronics they're handy to have so on the magnifying lamp to step back for you in fact I'll give you a view of the bench it gets messy dead quick sorry about that it just does it just things just unfold but I'm wheeling around on my chair and I'm in the warmth on this what has been rainy weekend so far in October. Putting all this back together, the radio does work but we'll, we'll wire it up for you. Get some um, long wave sounds coming out for now. Might get medium wave stations as well in here, don't know. But let's put it together, put a blanket over it. I'll dive the camera under the blanket and we can go in and have a little look, see if it's illuminating nicely. And then we're almost done till we start to move on to the MP3 section, that separate module and, and the connecting cable at the back of the set. Okay. Well, it took some doing and it took some patience. Just cramming in them LEDs and the uh, the red power indicator into that back display without anything touching, making sure everything was insulated. So <clears throat> we've done that now, heat shrink on, 
for the cables you've got three cables there a ground uh, a power feed for the red LED indicator and the other feed for the general illumination little earth tang that we fitted just there and this radio kindly repaired by George in Ireland big shout out to George and the Jedi Jedi and George got these radios sorted out good contact on YouTube and uh, I put a link to George's channel as well he does a he's a big radio buff ham radio I believe he's out uh, I think he's uh, Southern Ireland but I might be wrong George please correct me um, I know you're out across the water so George and the Jedi get our radio actually operational so we're actually live this radio was sent to him with a fault on it there they're, they are the uh, medium wave long wave boys so just gonna tune in and drop out we're picking up all the lights and picking up transformers but we're working without an antenna it's tricky So as I, sorry, don't see my hand. As I just go near the antenna connection, we get a better signal. Now then, this is the, going to be the MP3U boot up switch. So if I press that, you'll see the blue swap to red, and we go across, and uh, we lose the station because these are those programmable buttons. <coughs> Excuse me, and then get that station in again if we want. There's our indicator, so I'll power off the overhead lamp and you see what we've got there. We're all lit up nicely. Although in this light you can't really tell. But um, the display's worked and we're getting a nice uh, dial illumination there. So if I put it in pitch black, it's just right. There's just enough dial illumination for us, the camera won't quite pick it up, you can see it there, how the letters are picking up the refracted light, there you go, as the camera just locks on, not too in your face, not too bright, just about, well, just about right, camera struggling there, back in for the main lights, get your focus to lock, and there we lock the focus back on, so yeah, power switch controller, just there, from blue point to red point so that's those switches done and we've got functioning amplifier and radio so that stage of it is done thankfully because that was tricky took a few hours and then flipping the set over I've got that cover on that side actually but I was going to show you the buttons we did see them earlier on just a question of just tying back this cable neatly now a little bit of a hot melt gun just to hold this central cable in there you'll see that's the, the cable that carries the feed and you can see how it just finds its way through the tuning bar and out the other side without touching any metal it just as luckily as a hole in the middle of the tuning bar you can pass that cable through and it doesn't interfere with it that was the tricky bit so we, don't, we wouldn't want that to be touching otherwise eventually this bar would work, work its way through so we set it so it's complete clear run and it's not interfering with anything there so that completes the dial illumination and uh, red LED controller for this part of the build going to clean up now and call it a day for today that was quite intense so carry on with this tech video just a few minutes for me sorry just a few minutes for you it's a whole nother day for me okay with the switches all nicely fitted in position spin you around have a little look see that way you can see how they operate. It's time now to connect the cables up for this. And these cables will come from here off drill a hole in the back of the set, grommet in it, and then measure the distance where the module is going to be. So our module itself is going to be doing a couple of things. It's going to house the Bluetooth unit, and it's also going to house a couple of relays which are used. For the electric aerial and also 
for switching the antenna because we're going to share the antenna between the Bluetooth FM receiver and the medium wave and long wave receiver in the original head unit. So the signal from the aerial is going to come in on this flying lead. We plug in our electric aerial to that. This will then connect into this box and there's an output from the box to go in the back of the set here. And what happens inside the box is when I activate the uh, MP3 and the box powers up, it'll flip a relay across which will toggle the an antenna into this set so this will then sh take the aerial and there'll be no aerial connected to the radio which doesn't matter because the radio effectively switched off by the mp3 so they'll share the same aerial feed so you just need one aerial so it means that this can get a, a decent signal from the car's wing mounted antenna and when it's not in use the relay flips back and reconnects the aerial back to the set so we're sharing antennas between it so in, in uh, MP3 off mode, this radio will behave completely stock standard. That's how you do it. So that means I've got to mount this little box into the project box, mount this little board into the project box, and then we're going to um, get some relays connected and make up some cables. So we're going to make up cables, we're going to make up the relay switches, and we're going to make up the connector lead here. It's going to need a multi plug at the back because if we ever have to take the set out we don't want it hardwired into the dash it's obviously everything has to be unpluggable so we've got to drill through here and we've got to put a small connector I think I need to determine the amount of wires it's going to be at least one two three four plus the power five plus so we're going to need a five way plug I'm going to use a six way so I've got one spare so a six way multi plug coming on to this now that's the first job is to wire up these switches here we go for mp3 conversion into a blow point we'll back that out in a minute iron filings you don't want in your radio that's for sure certainly on the circuit board be very careful when you do that little job in fact we'll get our little magnet out and just make sure I don't think there's anything we're going to affect with a magnet there. Some some you gotta be careful putting a magnet in the radio is because there's some what they call ferrite cores magnetically um, charged little tuning cores. You don't wanna really put magnets too closely in a radio set. I think that'd be okay. Right, we've got a grommet going through that. Just here, we'll probably have to go one size up. So again, we're going to be I'm going to put something behind there this time. So we're just putting in the hole for the cable and grommet to go in for the, the hookup cable. We've got to do another hole as well for the. Oh no, we don't. It, this has a plug. I was going to say the the actual amplifier input, but it's got a plug on that, so we're okay there. Let me just get that fitted. You'll see this with the cables through. We've got our multi plug ready. Okay, so, and we've got the female end of it as well, ready to make our loom back to the control box. Okay, some heat shrink now on this cable here, sliding down, oh wait, and then we'll get that heated up in a sec, just makes a nice sheave for the cable, there and there, and then with a little bit of power it's going to shrink that down so this stuff is a sleeve which when you heat it up you'll have seen this no doubt shrinks down with heat you can get adhesive line stuff too really a heat gun's better than this little mini torch I have be careful you are like with a mini torch mainly the entry point for the grommet that counts more than anything else so it's fully shrunk down so we'll get through the grommet which we should do there now 
Right, you can pass this through the back of the set here. Just like this might need a little bit of WD-40 to help it get through the grommet. I imagine it be quite tight. Although I did calculate this just to be six cables. And then it should just pull through. It'll try and nip it, but it should go through. Your camera's doing a little rocking horse. It should go. It's trying to just pull back on the heat shrink there now. Very close. I knew that would happen. I knew it'd be tight. Squeeze. But it will go. So we're just in the process of threading that through there. Okay, there's the cables coming in. I've got a little zip tie around it as well. Hold on, that's my multimeter bleeping. Now we need to do each wire to each switch now. So soldering iron's on. And we're ready to do the solder. I'm going to just go grab my solder. Tin the end of each one of these, making sure no solder drops down into the set. We don't want that. Can we be steady? Sure we can. Each end then just tinning up. So that's just applying the solder so that wire's sort of primed and ready to make a, an attachment to the micro switch. One more to go. That red one needs stripping, so wire strippers come into view now. These are automatic strippers. You just poke the wire through, squeeze the handle, and it takes the insulation off for you. Makes life a bit easier. That red one's the power output, so that's going to be connecting to this red wire we've already installed. We're going to be joining those and put a little bit of heat shrink over there. So now our control wires. I've just had the multimeter on to buzz out which to make contact when the switch is closed and it's the top two so I'm going to go in with using the middle ones for the wires just going to work out the best physical way of getting in I think that's all right like that just coming on at a slight angle we don't want the push rod to be hitting these cables so you've got to be careful that rod's not going to hit that cable it's clear there green next. There's no particular code for the colours other than the red for the power. The rest just can be whatever we've picked. Tin up the contacts on the switches. Switches are glued to that Vero board. They're glue gunned onto the Vero board. So let's pop the yellow onto there. That goes on nicely. Then this brown yellow trace. On we go. One more to go. So we've got fast forward, pause, pause play, fast forward, rewind, and mode control on this. You don't really need the pause feature, but seeing that we had the cables and the switches, we'll run it back to the unit, but pause isn't really needed. So they're in, like that. All we've got to do now is strip back this red feed. To make a join the in the set, you could have sold straight to the switch that it picks up. I'd already set this up, so we won't do that. A little bit of heat shrink on, hands off screen, grabbing a piece of heat sleeve off your screen, cutting the heat sleeve. Maybe not quite that much. Bring it in. This one going down there. Here we go. I might have to turn the radio down a little bit. I'm, I'm hearing the songs. I've got rock on, but I don't want it to pick up and ruin the YouTube. Hopefully you can hear me. So I'm going to have to turn the set, the music off. And toss it near the Sweet Home Alabama play. That's the only problem with YouTube. Right, really quietly on. Checking your screen to see if you're still centralised. It's all a bit tricky up here. Right, heat shrink on two wires together. This is the supply back to the MP3, making sure my hands aren't causing problems for you. In we go to join these two up. Right, we've got to join there. Slide over. Quick blast. 
that's it. It's a bit aggressive that, but it works. Right, that's safe. So we've got a power feed going back, which picks it all up off the set. I must remember to fit a fuse. Now we need to common all these switches together. Now, the reason I had the multimeter on before, just put this to one side. Here's our module. So an MP3 module, I think I have to explain what this does. You can put a card in the front, an SD or a USB, and then it'll just play sounds out. And it's got a Bluetooth mode if you press this. And that'll uh, lock onto your mobile phone, and your mobile phone buttons can control the features as well, which is good. It's got an FM radio, and it's got an audio input as well at the back for the audio input somewhere. Audio input's on a flying lead, actually, on this. You've got to uh, have a socket on it. A little micro USB as well, so it's all in one unit, they're only about five quid. They, they work well. eBay, real cheap. So it's got its own power feed, it shall pick itself up off the radio, and then it's got audio input and audio output. But to control it, you use these buttons, and it looks like what they've done. I'm going to just set this up so you can see. I'm putting my multimeter on bleep test or continuity test. Now, when I touch the two probes of the of the test rig, you get a bleep, and we're going to see indeed if they've commented the ground on the control switches. So I just connect one side of the meter, and then I'm going to go over the switches and see if because this will make wiring a lot easier. So they've put a ground to each switch here, which is common to the whole chassis of the car that's going to be. If this is connected to the chassis of the car through the earth, then so is one side of all the control switches. Which means that I can just only have to put one wire on each switch that connects to the chassis ground, and that's going to emulate them controls. So we're only going to need four wires coming in onto the back of here, which makes wiring it easier, and it makes life easier wiring these up because we just common all them to a strip and then connect to a ground inside the radio. There's a handy ground just by the antenna there. So I'll loop a wire across to each one and solder it to ground and they are all the wiring inside the sets then finished. Kept it very simple, no mess, no fuss. So now it's time to connect a sort of daisy chain cable. Here's our daisy chain cable. We cut this, loop from one switch to the other then finally come back and loop to ground. So we'll start with ground there and go across because there's a ground connection just on the antenna we can use. So strip back. Oh, was a male stripper in a go-go bar. I was a male stripper in a go-go bar. I was a male stripper in a go-go bar. I was a male stripper in a go-go bar. I wasn't a male stripper in a go-go bar. Right. He's at it. He's at it. He's at it. This is supposed to be a serious tech video. He's at it. Okay, here we go. Onto there now. ready we just want to make sure we cut this the right length so it just wants to be around there strip back hold on I'm gonna I've got to keep your the viewfinder is uh, just out of, off, off my screen so I'm trying to make sure when I'm doing this that you can actually see it it's just the way I've got the tripod what I need is a, another tripod that can reach over the bench so tinning this sort of jumper, earth jumper lead into the antenna to pick up an earth. It's just because it's handy and there's a tag there. You could have connected this anywhere on this ground of the set. It didn't have to be there. And then it goes across to the first switch. Now, because there, there's two wires going on it, as I solder one on, it'll try and drop the other one off. You can pair them together, pre-twist them, but we'll see how we go on. A little bit tricky getting in here now, but we should be able to do it. It's handy that the MP3 module has used Earth as its sort of switching signal. It just saves messing. Sometimes it could have had like a 5 volt line running them. And you've had to actually pair it across each switch, making twice as much work. But these ones 
I built such that it's earth used. Tin up. Tin up. Right, can we get this on without it disturbing the other cable? Should be able to. Got to get right in. This is probably the trickiest one. Well, actually, they'll all be the same. There you go. But you certainly don't want anything touching. Might as well get the other cable ready. We need another jumper lead now. Two more jumper leads needed. Making up the other jumper lead and probably will twist this last one on like this. I should just be able to do it. So I don't like too much cable together on a small pin of the micro switch. It gets a big a bit too much size of solder. it down tin the other ends what I'm going to do when all this is in place I'm going to jump you ahead so you having to go through all this but you can see what we're up to there Okay, I've finished all those micro switches just earlier on. We were fitting those and there uh, we have all the operation. All four plus the power. Connected this handy little lead on. That's routed through, heat shrinked on and in with a grommet. Whoops. And then a multi-plug. That means I can take the set out of the dash. So that is the control side sorted out in terms of those switches. Me, uh, if my voice sounds rough, that's because of the NEC. Okay, now then, we want to. Uh, let's have a look. We want to start building the MP3 box, and we also need to hook this up. We're going to have a multi-plug. I'm just going to grab it because I just knocked it out. This is the control wires for the MP3 module. We've got to get them onto this. Now, I bought myself a little aluminium project box. These are great little project boxes. I've started building it into the MP3 system. You saw this module earlier and now it's fitted into the front of this and then we begin to make these holes in the side. One's for a fuse there because I'm not going to use the fuse. Use the fuse? <laughs> From the normal radio supply my radio will be controlled by this one as opposed to Ford's under the bonnet one because the power for the radio will be being picked up from this box not from the auxiliary feed behind the radio dashboard aperture okay so I want to make it so that this module can be removed from the car for servicing so any connection to it is going to have multi plugs so we've got one multi plug there which is for the audio signal that's going to be connecting into the back of the DIN socket which is the amplifier's input. We use a, a male version and female version there so this would be connected under the back of the dash that would be dangling under the dash and so this would be velcroed on and I'd be able to remove it. So on the other end of this we've got a solder. This multi plug, this DIN plug has to solder on here and that DIN plug fits in that socket. So there's different there's two types by the way the spacing can be different if you're trying to find one of these you've got to get that spacing right that would connect the set up the set would then need power which is going on another loom which we're going to do okay we'll leave the radio aside for one for now just for now we've got to take the mp3 
module out and now solder across its control switches. So we're going to piggyback across these switches. I think we've explained it before, but all these micro switches I've just fitted just simply do the same as what my finger's doing now. We just press that by soldering across the backs of the switches. That would do the control of the MP3. The power to the MP3 boots up. I have said this before, but it boots up, gets its 12 volts from this little switch just there. So when I press on my radio, that now becomes 12 volt. The MP3 boots up. At the same time as the MP3 booting up, it applies power to this relay. All right, 12 volt relay. The 12 volt relay will take the radio signal. So you'd normally be listening to your normal tuner circuit. Nothing to do with MP3. You just have a normal. It would be a normal radio going on at the moment. So. No one would know it any different and it won't behave any different and it isn't any different. But when we press this button, this power button, that switch becomes live. This relay toggles on. And because we've got the cassette deck connector in the back of there, it thinks this is the cassette deck. The relay toggles across and takes what was normally the amplifier, normally the radio signal, routed into the relay and has normally been coming back out of the relay back into the radio therefore you not know it's not being the radio toggles across and that's when it picks up the mp3 signal of course now because the 12 volts come online the mp3 is lit up and is now giving an audio output depending on what usb card or program you've got it on you can change the program with the buttons on here now because it's all active and that is really overview that's how it works there's not much more to it than that we are going to throw in a little bonus feature and that bonus feature is the ability to toggle the antenna signal the reason I want to toggle the antenna signal is because this mp3 also has an FM radio on it but it needs a, a, an antenna to it now I don't want to share the antenna in other words just twist the two antenna wires together so that they're both picking up the same because this set will get interfered or this will interfere with the radio signal because you're mixing two types of circuitry not a good idea better to whilst we have one relay powered up for flipping the audio just explain connected straight with it as well so they're both together is another relay which does the same toggle action but this time it toggles the antenna signal so the antenna would go into the relay come out of one pin into the radio when I switch to mp3 mode the antenna comes in and now comes out on a different pin which we then route into the mp3 so it just flips the antenna between the mp3 module or the original blow punk set flip flop depending on that switch it'll become even clearer later if that's not indeed clear now my task at the moment is to extend these wires long enough so that when the radio is in the middle of the dash and the modules velcroed up by the um, glove box we've got a long enough piece of wire at the moment that's not long enough we would we could have just connected it in here but it won't reach so this needs extending not by much maybe uh, half a meter of extension needed to be added onto those wires a shame but I'm not going to rewire the Molex pins I'm just going to heat shrink and solder join those once I've done that I will then test that the modules firing up before I then start routing the audio through into that DIN plug and then we can solder on the DIN plug. Here's the DIN plug, I'll bring it into the screen. It's just a little kit of bits, a little casing and you just squeeze a, um, a strain relief, um, cable relief, you just squeeze that so it locks the cable and a little screw comes with it. Also we've got here is a 3.5 jack socket and on the mp3 it's got the ability to have an audio input so if we solder this jack socket to that audio input just like this would go there and chassis mount it here and then we would have a sort of uh, male to female extension lead probably fit it plug it in and then route that extension lead maybe into the glove box so if all else failed and you had no bluetooth or if you didn't have a phone that had bluetooth on or bluetooth was not working or 
maybe needed to be used for something else, I don't know. But you would have the lead, I'm going to reach across and get it, hold on. This kind of a lead, a 3.5 jack, except this end would be female. And you'd have that maybe loose in the glove box perhaps, then you could plug it. In fact, no you wouldn't have female, you'd have male to male, this is the correct lead. Because you'd have this there ready to plug into the whatever device you've got that's got a 3.5 jack on it. You'd then select the mode switch on the MP3. Well, you wouldn't need to use this button because don't forget the radio's copying the control of these, so you'd hit the mode button and then you get an audio announcement in Chinglish and they say uh, audio input mode. I can't do Chinese, I can't do much, many accents. I can do Lancashire, no problem. Women, great big uh, steel girders and all, oh. but I can't do many accents. Occasionally slip into London accent because that's half my native. I digress. You could then select audio input and then play on your jack socket, whatever you wanted to play, and off you go. That is an overview of the system. There, you can use this USB card, it would go in there like that. However, I'm going to have a USB extension lead so that this is nearer to the driver rather than having to reach underneath where this module is. I mean, if you had enough albums, you'd probably leave that in for a long time. But however, you may have friends, bring your music with you on the music stick. You may have different sticks for different genres. I sometimes have drum and bass, but don't tell anyone I love drum and bass on long distance drives. There's something about it. It's very hypnotic. And some of the drum and bass is quite deep. It's almost like Tangerine Dream was to me in the 80s. Right. So an extension lead would go there, but you can have what we call a house card, and I don't mean house music, I mean a card that's permanently in the device, okay, that's the all-time classics. You could perhaps put a shuffle, this will actually won't shuffle, so you have to shuffle your files and save them on the SD. But if you have a big enough SD card and enough songs, let's say, let's say for example, you had, oh, I'm going to make a guess. Uh, 5,000 too much. No, go on, I'll say it. 5,000 tracks. That's a lot of music, isn't it? I mean, timed it out. What's that? It's going to be 25,000 minutes, five minute songs, I think. That's right, yeah. Well, you could put that on an SD card into there, and it could be your all time favourite music. It could be just pick and mix music. I don't know, but for me, I have about 1,000 songs on this on my other cars with seven, pure hardcore 70s classics on. So that if you pull out the USB, and in our case it'd be at the end of the extension lead, the USB extension by the steering column, it reverts to the house SD card. So you've effectively got two libraries available um, there, which is a good thing, and it automatically thinks, it automatically decides, right, there's no USB stick either in there or on the extension lead plugged in, so it then looks next at the SD card. If there's neither present, it goes to radio, I think, or it might go to audio in default. It's quite good. As I say, the audio announcements, you need the audio announcements. Some don't have them. Because when I'm pressing the mode button, let's do it on the set, otherwise I'll confuse you. The mode button, it's that one. It would say audio input mode, radio mode, waiting to be connected, Bluetooth, then music mode. And they're the four settings, music mode is, means M, uh, USB stick. And that's how it works, fast forward and rewind. Whoops, did I lose something then? Oh, I did. Something popped out of there. We've not lost any of our switches, have we? No, we haven't. Must have been something loose. Oh, be careful, a, bit, a little bit of plastic. Right, let's just double check that. Well, all right. I have gone through these buttons, there shouldn't be anything. Oh, it's some glue from the glue gun. There we go. A little bit more left there. Glue gun's very handy for these. I use it to mount these switches. Super glue was a bit harsh, and super glue on the switches can creep into the switch and destroy it. So, guess who found out the hard way on that? And um, if you need to buy these switches, open my organised department. Here they are. There's the CPC code if you can see it. 
CPC is in Preston, they're online, CPC Farnell online. And these little tiny micro switches, back in they go. So that's where we're up to, we need to get the soldering iron on. We need to start building up these cable leads. Okay, quick check of time for me and it's 10 to 7. I have to keep me on the time today because I've got a video going out, NEC 2019, that's how mixed up all these films are because this isn't going to be going out for a long time, this MP3 episode. Well, I'll say that probably a couple of weeks from now. So laying it all out, planning it all out, how I'm going to do it, these holes in for cables to come through. And that's what I'm up to, and that's where we're up to so far, MP3 conversion. I could do a condensed video of this, but that's the components there. You're going to leave me to do a little bit of soldering and build up some leads. There's no real need to show you me building the cables up. I really wanted to just de demonstrate the principle of it as opposed to the actual construction because there's plenty of soldering videos out there on YouTube and I'm just showing you how I'm doing the setup for this so that it's a removable box from under the dash. We want to be able to take it out. I'm like, I've never had one break yet, never one go wrong yet, but it's prudent just to have it as a removable module and with this lid you've got a nice self-contained module i didn't paint it this color it happened to be a red color i would have preferred it silver i know the dash is red so it's probably the best you could get great little project box again from cpc i've used metal on it so that it shields the controller so it's just a little bit better you get a bit of shielding on that will make sure there's a, an earth on this case because it'll be velcroed on but these project boxes are really got something very therapeutic about putting that lid on. It just feels clunky and chunky and solid and just the right sort of spec for the car. The plastic project boxes are good too, don't get me wrong, you know, these are great little that's can be used for a potting box. When I say potting, you pour a compound in. You don't smoke it, you pour a compound in and it's an inert resin, usually black. And so I've seen it in grey as well and white actually. And you can, once you've built a little circuit you think it's going to last forever, you can encapsulate it in this if it's going to be in the weather in your engine bay uh, or in the elements and it's waterproof. And it can also act as a heat dissip dissipator as well. It's like a, a two pack epoxy. You mix it in a little bag, squeeze it in and it, it seals your circuit board in like a block and it goes solid, it cures and then it's safe in that block, the, the electronics from the environment. And you can get different grades of, a, of a potting compounds, some are uber resistant to chemicals, others are sort of, you know, graded accordingly. We need to build a power lead to, for the set. The power lead for the set comprises of a switched live to turn it off and on with the ignition, an earth connection and electric aerial output. Three cables coming alongside this cable, then the audio input cable so that's and then all going to come in one bunch or I'll keep the audio input separate and the rest are all bunched and then they just come to the back through the dash so that I don't have loads of cables all to do with the radio just a nice neat central location of cables unplug and the set can be withdrawn because that really is important so that you can have the, the radio removable just in case uh, something goes wrong or it needs a little service. I would say really you never really need to service these once you're done with some the appropriate grease that you'd use. We'll find out what's the best one to use. They, they seem to last forever. I mean you saw me pull that Granada one out and get it going. So they do seem to last forever these radios. Okay, I'm going to call it a, a day for today because we're doing all right and getting a picture of how I'm going to build it. Sometimes when you build on the fly or just as you're going, um, as long as you've gone out and bought all loads of little bits to cover any different angles, you can build as you go. Like I didn't really plan out the exact layout of this, I just thought right, cut a slot in it so the angle grinder cut two slits and then I just chain drilled and knocked through then sanded it and then that went in, it's held in with the screws at the top. There you can see them. And then I planned out the fuse, and then the location of the relays, 
we'll glue gun them in or, or epoxy them in we'll just pop them in like that we'll make an earth tag for this too it's going to take about another couple of hours and we should be up and running so I'll let you have the benefit of fast forward while I make up those cables and then we can just switch to it um, powering up we've got a speaker there's no reason why it shouldn't just boot up there's music on that stick so for you in a few minutes not even that we're going to be running I'll show a few little cables going together and then let's cut to the, the main event get it powered up we can move on to another electronic module see you in a sec Here's me goodie box. Oh, my voice, it's still not recovered from the NEC. Here's my goodie box from 12 volt planet. So, with the exception of that Ford wiring harness tape, which is separate, I'm now going to pick out some colours of cable. Actually, all oh, that's probably too big to use for signal wire to extend these excuse me to extend these cables on the mp3 module so i'm gonna find some this would work there you don't know it doesn't need to be too thick or i could just use an alarm cable that would also work and that gives you all the cables in one because it's very low contact on it uh, current on it it's just a switch signal so we get a an extender on this now and get it wired in. We've got to take the MP3 module out and piggyback the wires or solder the wires onto the back of the control switches. We want to get this up and running ASAP. Okay, some soldering going on now. Okay, just using these little jaws to hold the cable in place while I solder and then I've got my heat shrink on, slide over the, the joint and we're good to go. So I'm going to do all those, I won't bore you with that. Just extending the cables really making them longer so it can reach from the dashboard centre down to where the modules are going to be fitted. I'll extend all these wires and we'll show you how we connect them up. Okay and now I'm doing the slightly trickier part of just piggybacking these wires on top of the control switches so that they copy the signal. Just using three of the wires, fast forward mode and rewind I don't need to use the pause button we're just going to keep that control off the radio as a spare so we're in with those three wires and I just meter them out with the continuity tester to make sure that the we should go earth to the wire when you press the button in it should bleep out which it does on all three so we're piggybacked into the unit that's the only real mod we've got to make on that to get it to, to control so those three now connect up to the multi-plugger that I fitted. All the wiring harness is done. That's all joined up. So everything's connected up at that end. So through the cable, there's a multi-plug there. So I'm just unplug the whole unit. Then some power cables and the fuses lined up. I just use some epoxy and some heat shrink, passing the cable through the casing just to stabilise them wires so they don't chafe. You can get bulkhead grommets and stuff like that, but this epoxy bonds it in pretty tough. This is that Pegatanki two-part epoxy. There's all sorts you can use. Araldite will work. This stuff's quite good. I just got it from Motor Factors. It's very strong. So that goes in there. I'm going to place the unit back in to the casing and then connect these up to those cables and then we should be able to power it up some hot melt glue on each wire now it's soldered on that just stops it pulling off the circuit track the circuit tracks are very fragile so that just gives it some uh, relief in case ever pulled on those cables so that it locks them in place now that they're tested and soldered on so some hot melt glue it's good stuff for this kind of job set straight away okay time to solder the wires into the loom there is actually one more cable to connect, that's the FM antenna just right on the edge of the board here by my mucky nails just there is the solder pad for the FM antenna so we need to be wary where that is we won't be able to get it when this is fitted in so I'll just get the cable onto the FM antenna now Okay, screw this back in. 
The FM antenna's got pad both sides, so I'm getting from the top. Control cables there, fast forward mode and rewind are all we need to run it. They now connect to these cables, which then in turn go to the radio. Soon as I always say this, don't soon gets messy on the bench. Right. What we're gonna do, I've marked them on the plug, fast forward rewind and mode are coloured up on the board so we just need to extend them cables and bring them in and bring them out and just pop out the side and connect in there under we go for that a little bit of heat shrink as we go through this hole now in the bulkhead heat shrink to pass those through and then again we'll use the resin to lock it in place through like so now we join here and that's the control side done all we've got to do then is power and the relays we'll power it up first and make sure the controls work before we start doing the audio side of it so we'll get some electricity running some power running last hole is for the power ones to go through and then we're getting there i'll bring it up to camera last connections to make. See you in a sec. Okay, bringing the cables through into the box and now fitting the relays. Glue gun, hot melt down. My trigger's gone on the hot melt glue so I have to push the stick in. It's good stuff for this kind of job. It's instant and it's pretty strong. In for a second relay, that's going to be the antenna switch over relay but we're just putting them Park them next to each other so they can share a common earth and you'll see the black earth wire is just in the middle of the two relays and we have a diode across the relays which the diode is a, a kind of like it's called a back EMF diode it's designed well not designed it's just it has the action of stopping any high voltages being generated across the relays a relay is a miniature coil, magnetic coil, and as you apply the 12 volts, because these are 12 volt relays, there's all different voltages of relays, these are 12 volt ones. The coil energizes, creates the magnetic field which pulls the contacts together and makes the switch. However, when you turn it off, the coil, the magnetic field collapses and it has the action of a similar to a spark plug coil on your car. It creates quite a high voltage. If I stuck my fingers across here and turned it off, you get a little bit of a a tinge now that's enough to destroy electronic components so what you do you solder what's called a diode across it and it has the action of shorting out that that um, high voltage it's called a snubber diode or a back EMF diode you don't have to have them like if you've got your car a headlight relay in your car for example you know the normal ones that are main Lucas relays or Omron relays or Hella relay, just your normal car relay. You don't need it as long as that relay is not controlled by anything with microelectronics. Uh, if you did, then you have to fit a diode across. You've got to get the diode the right way round. The little bar on the diode, uh, I think you can just about see it, it's tricky, goes on the positive side of the 
cool. I'm gonna. Okay, just have to take a phone call. And now we are making the earth strap for the chassis itself. I'm gonna zoom you out just a touch. Hold on. A little earth wire here. In fact, <coughs> excuse me, that is gonna be a double earth cable. Because it goes out into the car itself and picks up on the chassis. These two go together. Twist that round. In we go to the earth tab. Solder up. Could do with probably the next wattage iron up. Now for this, I'll just solder. because it's a reasonably meaty connection it should do it be quicker with me around this will get it actually so i'm just attaching a tag to the chassis of the casing to earth the casing and then the wire continues on and picks up inside the car chassis itself this iron not as quick as if I had my high watch iron going. Didn't think I'd be doing this this quickly. But it will go. Just waiting for it to heat it up. Move it on till it starts to flow. <clears throat> now I'll take one of the earths across to the relays. We've put that diode in. I might have to switch to bigger iron. Doesn't look like it's gonna go. Can crimp these, I prefer solving them. It depends where it is as well in the car. Some companies don't actually solder these. They, there was a an article I read about moisture ingress and solder, and they mentioned a different technique to do it. Now I could unbolt this and solder it, or I could get me a iron. So I'll show you where we are. We're just on that tag, and that's going to go across across to the relay feed and then we're almost done we can actually power up the set we've got the earth there we've got the power feed here and then everything else should, should just light up fuses in just got me second set of padangi on there padangi i'm never gonna be able to pronounce that name and it just goes to a, like a putty stage and then i sort of knead it into shape that locks all the wires solid um yeah so I'll make a decision on how I solder this tab. I think of what I'm going to do purely for laziness. I don't know where the big iron is, so I'm going to go for unscrewing it and soldering it off. It's only because it's, it's sinking the heat out. Let's just solder it up, get it done. Should of course fought that through and I didn't. The thing I like about this wooden bench topper that I've got is you can just, I mean I usually use a block of wood for this. I like to just press it into the wood because wood doesn't really conduct that good. Wood, good, doesn't conduct and you can press down and lock the piece in position while you're soldering it. Away we go, we're off. We are soldering. There we go. Let's get that in. So that is an earth just there. Solder this, tin this up, this end. 
as it follows <laughs> hey stop it as it follows the it doesn't matter if you burn the top it's just great you just push down on the wire and you're good right we can solder that on to there that goes in the middle of the box put full on earth connections to the relay and distributing it across to the other side as well locking a diode in at the same time so we get a good junction there There we go. Right, that's that bit. I have a little um, foam pad just off screen. I'll spin you around and show it, yeah? Just here, which is damp. That's what that bottle of water is. And you just swipe the end of your tip like that. Back over here. You're on a tripod. Okay, we can now bolt this back on. Go put the bolt on the side. Still a bit warm, of course. Right. Nip that up. These aluminium boxes are great because it's really easy to drill holes in them with just soft metal. This now becomes our output wire. This goes through this hole out. Put a grommet in that. There we are. Earth. So two relays, one switching the antenna, we'll, we'll do that next after we've powered up. One switching the line into the radio from MP3 to radio. As I explained, these are the inputs. One of them is used for the jack socket, we need to do that as well. A little jack socket here, a little jack socket which we connect into the body and that goes on. That's for audio input. So your, your iPod or whatever, uh, or little portable iPod. But a lot of it you're going to be using your Bluetooth really, mainly hooked into there off your phone if you're on it. You're going to use auxiliary, of course, MP3 stick and everything else that it does. Right, there's nothing to stop me connecting power to it. And I could just do it live. Um, I could do a clear from the bench though. But just to prove your up to speed where I am and nothing's tested. We've got a fuse on it, so if there's anything wrong, it'll blow. Turn on some power over there. And we'll boot it up. Okay, and put it all together. This is now the line output of the MP3, joining the left and right channels together with two resistors to make it mono because it's a mono setup with the stereo system. <laughs> stereo mono, no, no, with the radio, it's mono. It's just the way that the blab punks are, the amplifier is mono. We could go stereo if we wanted, but I've uh, always managed. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way it is. Mono dash in the middle of the speaker, in the middle of the car. You do get surround sound with the tweeters, um, but it's not a stereo image. You could make it stereo if you had a different type of head unit. Right, now then, we were originally going to have the control wires of the MP3 all running up into the set direct but it doesn't like it so I've had to build four relays you can just see them stacked next to each other there each relay corresponds with each switch that we fitted on the micro switches there so when I press the micro switch the relay will click and then the relay contacts then piggyback over to the buttons the reason that to do it is it must have it must be really critical on the resistance and when I had a long, when I extended these buttons on the long cable run, it started jumping tracks on its own. I just powered it up. So what I had to do is just build this little relay array there, which just has a much shorter wire run 
to piggyback over the buttons in other words these buttons wires are not extended right into the set they stop at these relays and then the relays close and then that controls the set I had to do that okay so now I'm going to connect the audio toggle into the relay there's the relay at the back this goes on the uh, common of the relay and then it's going to it's going to pick that audio signal sorry this goes on one of the outside contacts it goes on the normally open one so when you power the set up the relay closes and directs the audio signal picks it up from the mp3 when you turn off the mp3 the relay clicks off and redirects the signal from the radio original set pin there sounds a little bit complicated but all I can say is I'll give it a bit more of an explanation once it's complete so that's the, the rear view of the set as it is I'm going to neaten it up a little bit to realize this is the aerial relay so it's time to solder on an input then get that jack that din plug done and then it should give us sound because we are actually powering up now if I switch on on the bench we're actually on and we can control from the buttons at the front and my hand now goes across over here and presses the switches corresponding ones fast forward then volume up you can actually do a volume up as well long hold gives you increased volume but you don't really need that Now can, I can see on screen flickering that I can't see in real life, that's a very interesting artefact. Can you see that? It's like it's uh, the camera's picking up the frequency of each, each thing, quite interesting. Mode then, pressing mode and we'll go through to the, hold on let's get the right button volume down oh and we've got also we've got folder select on this so I've used all four and I've added an extra wire unfortunately this plug hadn't allowed for it so there's an extra cable there that's folder select if you press the folder select button which is the spare button I was going to have on the set you actually get to select your folders which is good because I've never had that on any of my cars so I can put different genres of music in different folders which is a good feature do you like that so we're going to go for that okay so we're going to get the audio input done now nearly ready to have a listen we're on the bench <clears throat> we're set up and we're ready to go there's power to the main set I can turn off like this this just needs some tidying up the cheapskates Chinglish they do a good job of the mp3 but they don't put a decoupling capacitor on there this little capacitor just filters any noise on the line this mp3 tends to generate a little bit of sort of noise on the power pack and send it down the feed wire to the radio so the radio sort of buzzes and gets a sort of a hum so we just put this capacitor across the input to the power pack and it's it um, suppresses the noise you can fit them on your alternator you've seen them on on radios before so it just needs that decoupler on this little circuit board just wants mounting properly we've got the audio input in and we've got the jack so not the jack but the phono din plug done and that's in the back of the radio so if I turn the radio around just looking at the back of the radio now you can see there's the power feed electric aerial the speakers on let's get a better picture let's get a better view and then the DIN plug just at the bottom that's wired in so now what happens is you switch on the set and we have a normal radio now because I've not activated the MP3 if we had an aerial in the back we'd get a we'd actually get some sound we have got the aerial down here but it's it's chopped There you go, see, I'm coming off that aerial now. If I was to tune, I would get I would get a radio signal. So that's our aerial. That's got to go into here. And it's got to go onto that relay because that aerial feed is shared 
the MP3 and the radio share the same aerial and it flips between the two on this relay. We've not done that yet, we've just gone on to the actual MP3. So everything's fitted, needs, as I say, it needs a little bit of tidying up. This uh, additional breakout board, you can hear, can you hear that? Everything needs decoupling. We're picking up some noise, but when it's all grounded, that'll stop. And it's all connected to the car so if we switch on the mp3 now i'm going to press this switch which is connected to this that boots up music okay and now it will automatically start playing barbara streisand at the moment so we're on we can't play much because of copyright you can just say little clips but we can fast forward So we go through the tracks. Don't ask me why I've got Barbara Streisand on here. I've absolutely, absolutely no idea at all. But the great thing about it now is we can switch albums, which I've never been able to do before. So I'm going to press the album button, which is uh, this one. So hand swap across. Uh, no, it's not that one. It is, sorry, the second one in. Second one in. Switch albums, folders. They call it folders. This is now a 70s folder. We've got Barry White on. So we can get, we've escaped from Streisand. And now it's a Barry White album. I never take anything for granted. I never take anything for granted, baby. You and I, that's all I ever want to be. I'm the walrus, the love walrus. Barry White is Barry White. So you can hear me, I'm going through all the songs. Just one ticket, baby. Oh, I love that song. Woo! Just one ticket, baby. Uh, yeah, so I, I wish I could play you some music. I can't. Lid goes on this. And blows the whole thing up sky high. Lid goes on, and we're nearly ready. One ticket, baby. Just one ticket for the newster. So, I don't know what albums are on this stick, but it's great because what I would do now in this situation is I would put um, a lot of songs in just one folder, a lot of singles, a lot of 70 singles and 80 singles. So I can just scroll through, and then for those long distance drives. I'll maybe put some Pink Floyd on, some ACDC, some um, Led Zeppelin and, and some more classic rock albums. Again, you could have a folder with 10,000 songs in it, all classic rock. Um, and then Pink Floyd, you can go through. So let's find another album. Just one ticket, baby. Where's this folder button? 15. Don't know what this is. Another folder. Sorry, that's the wrong one. We want this one. Oh. That's the pause control as well. When you just press it once, you get pause. Press and hold it to get the folders. We've got Debbie Harry now. This could be an 80s album, let's see. Idea what we've got on here. I don't even know where this M23 uh, sticks from. Change folder 20. Let's see if we find anything interesting. What the hell is this? Phone the police. Oh, told them there's a bloke get Carter. I don't know what Get Carter's doing on there. You wouldn't do that. I don't know why Get Carter's. What the heck is that? Anyway, no, point is, it's all running. Um, we could go to whatever that track was. It's it's gone. Some some very odd stuff here. I think you get the picture though so we can now switch to other 
features. So that's Bluetooth and it comes up on there. So now you can connect your phone. Press the mode button again. I'm going to bring the light round. I've gone into darkness, I don't know why. So now we'll have FM, which we're not going to pick anything up unless I put the antenna on. A little tiny pad just on top of the MP3 for the antenna. Just there, you can hear it change as I connect. If we were to solder, that wire needs to solder onto this relay so that it can share the uh, antenna which we're going to have. So we can't really get any music on FM. We can scan if we want and I could hold the screwdriver and we may well pick some up. But I could do we I could do with soldering a wire on there. Scan again. You might get something now it's scanning with my screwdriver on as the I doubt it. We might do. not going to pick anything up should do really that it will I've had this before so that is it we can go back to the music line in. that's line in as you can tell by our ching chinglish pronunciations music let's get them both pieces together so you can see them working side by side you could even put this on top nothing to stop that look stacked and ready to go with our mp3 system looking good let's pick let's pick another song the weirdest music in the world is on this it's just some kind of I don't know what some kind of memory stick I've had lying around change albums I do like that that folder feature it's really handy we got Cliff oh come on Cliff oh it's an 80s album we got it Clammy Fisher don't know who that is I thought it was an 80s album radio stations what Say about these uh, these uh, fantasies. I haven't really gotten into that too much. Why don't you do that? Huh? No, you can't bring up masturbation. I don't know what the hell. What the heck is this? I have no idea what I've got. Get out. Line. I'm Adam Perola, that's uh, not Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is... I think it's some kind of wind-up station. This ain't the radio. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, get that, that's some kind of joke album on here. Get out that. Let's just get Carter. Don't know. I don't want to risk any copyrights. So there we go. The MP3 is on, light, house lights can come back on now. I was just checking out what it looked like in the dark. Not that this really is seen, this MP3 module. So there we go, we are up, running, we just need to neaten up. There's our multi-block connector, so the whole thing just disconnects from under the dash for servicing if needed. The radio has already been done and built, that was a mission. Sorry I ended up in the dark, but that's just the way it is with these late night sessions on these things you work your brain more alive for me is more alive at night time mp3 module bluetooth mp3 sd card fm radio and line in with some modifications a decoupling capacitor just to stop the hum a, 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 a relay to share the antenna between the onboard fm and the actual radio's long wave medium wave a relay, relay to flip the audio input from either the MP3 or the radio's own signal, uh, all active when you activate one button on the control of your set. This button here turns off the MP3 and you become a normal radio now. That relay has now toggled the radio signal back into the set, so now you can just tune. No one would ever know that's a normal set until you press this and it boots up 
light comes on there to say MP3, that boots up. A little uh, annunciation split to. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. So we can pair. FM tender. FM. Back to line in. Music. Back to music. Boot up for music. And it always remembers where you last left off as well on the song, which is a great feature. So turn your ignition off, it'll always revert back to that song. If you're filling up with petrol, the ignition goes off and you're halfway through an album, it will revert back to the beginning of the last track played, which is great. The modules themselves are very inexpensive. This was £8 for the module. Obviously, there's some relays in a box and a few other bits. Wire as you will. I can improve on this. It was a bit of an experiment. I had to add one extra wire because I realised that this Bluetooth unit here, this MP3 module, had a folder selection feature and luckily we had one spare switch that had fitted inside here which we now use for the folder selector which is great. All done, let's box it up, clean up, tidy up and we'll have a final review. Great. Okay with the radio MP3 all done I'm now switching my mind over to the gauges and the gauge warning lamps. You remember we built the warning module to sequence through when we've got alarm conditions that just needs finishing off but before we do finish and box it off we've got to connect it up to the gauges and test that system now there's a couple of ways that we can do these gauges this is a fuel gauge <clears throat> and there's a couple of ways you can connect the warning lamps up to it you can get an electronic circuit that will measure the voltage across the terminals of the gauge so that when it reaches a particular voltage uh, it will trigger the low fuel warning it's called a comparator now I've got one of them running one of my cars and it it's a little bit hit and miss sometimes especially when I rev up or if the battery goes low the, the um, warning lamp comes in at a slightly different position that's such a critical voltage across here that um, I found the comparator ones at least the ones I used may not have had a voltage reference um, system on it so that it couldn't tell if your battery voltage was changing and it didn't self adjust so basically it would come in at a quarter of a tank if your battery was fully charged it would come in a little bit less if the battery was going flat or you had all your lights on it would affect the switching point it still worked but it would come in at different switching points which annoyed me a little bit because I like to time the actual Amount, I like to measure the amount of fuel left in the tank when that light comes on so that you can calculate your range based upon your average MPG and just make a note of it in the car. Important if you're right on the top of the Swiss Alps, your light comes on, you can basically work out if you're going to make it or not, or whether or not to pull over and wait for fuel rather than just completely run out in a difficult position. So you pick the nearest safe spot and pull in. If you had a 50 miles range, and you could keep on going probably till you find somewhere else so you needed to know when the light comes on that it would give you an accurate indication of the fuel left and the one I used I found it a little bit unreliable in terms of down to the exact literage left it would give you a rough idea but not exact so um, you could get an improved version of it perhaps or we could take it apart and modify it however just for a little bit of an experiment this afternoon I've mocked up a different way of doing the low fuel with parts I had lying around so it's cost me nothing I've used these opto switches these are a little light beam and you put something between them two towers you can see there and it breaks the light beam and, and triggers a switch so what I've done I've got a gauge here and I've added a little paddle to the I don't know if we can see it I've added a little paddle to the actual needle it was a bit tricky to do let's get a pointer and point it out for you it was a little bit tricky to do I had to solder on to take the, the, the needle off the uh, dial indicator take it off and I had to solder on a little leg and a little make a little paddle that little wafer thin piece of very thin plastic and make a little paddle that goes between the light beam now I've fitted, I've cut the light beam down, you can just see it there and it just nestles into the gauge if it didn't fit I wasn't going to do it, but I thought I'll give it a try and if it works then I've saved um, I've created a different type of warning system 
so that is my idea the Cortina City idea a little paddle and we'll see it working now because I can connect some power to the pin hold on while I'm just going to get a crock clip on this now just connect it up for you show you this work okay I've got the gauge wired up and I can put as low voltage which is all it needs to fire the, the um, heat up the bimetallic strip these are bimetallic strip gauges so the coil of wire gets hot <coughs> excuse me coil of wire gets hot and then this uh, bimetallic metal two pieces of metal sandwiched together when one expands faster than the other causes the metal to bend and that deflects the gauge so a little coil gets hot heats up some metal two different metal strips called bimetallic causes deflection in the gauge because the metal bends as it bends it creates a little lever in action which makes your gauge go up or down depending on the temperature so we're now connecting some power up and the gauge goes up and you'll see a green light coming on that's my output of the sensor just showing up and as the gauge drops now you'll see we want it just to be in the last quarter of the tank the last well what, what in one two three yeah last quarter of the tank to come on or to go out sorry it'll go out as soon as it hits that last quarter of the tank there it goes so now I'll show you how that's working the little paddle let's bring the light in we'll go over the into the magnifier for you let's see if that'll work for us I think we can go into the magnifier yes we can you can see just about on that magnified image if I now connect the the feed to the gauge let me just see where my eyes are I've got the wire I'm gonna hook it up let's try and get steady let's have no dodgy camera work I'm trying to get in right watch this now deflection let's see if we can get you better uh, right in that edge can we zoom a little bit will it focus yeah just about see how that little paddle just goes out now it's going to come back in let's get some more light on for you see if we can get that increased lightage I can just see the paddles coming into range now it's not the best light let's try and get you around this side that's a bit better from there you can see two little rectangular black boxes and you can see the bottom of the gauge and you can see that when that gauge moves a little sort of interrupting little bit of plastic moves away on the little arm that I've soldered onto the needle and that opens the light beam up at the moment it's breaking the light beam causing the, the output but that would later on open up when the uh, gauge deflect so let's see again moving out paddle moves away gauge goes up probably get a better run in now let's go without the magnifier probably better without the magnifier there that's about it it's coming in now that will then break the light beam triggering a little output which gives me into my warning module my low fuel and it's pretty stable it's not going to flicker it's going to hold and it's going to be it's going to be good it doesn't affect the gauge in any way check that a little piece of wire and the paddle doesn't have any um, any bearing on the gauge so we're good to go there so we now have to just feed these cables through into the housing this housing is just an experimental one this whole gauge was experimental I haven't actually damaged it I could remove this with no damage to the gauge just snip that little paddle off if I wanted so I don't want to damage anything but that is a Cortina City mod as opposed to making a what's called a voltage comparator which I found a little bit hit and miss so this is my more, more rock steady way of doing it it seems solid I've soldered that leg onto that uh, little 
um, arm actuator as far as I can see it looks reliable we'll give it a good bit of a testing put it in its housing now and see what we can do and we'll move on to uh, the temperature we'll do the same idea for the temperature gauge we'll make a little opto we'll make a little paddle and then we can have the high temperature um, set up as well okay and our next gauge to do after we've done that fuel one is the oil gauge we need to fit an oil pressure switch because the cars don't have them you could fit one on a T adapter in the engine bay and you can get those T adapters from Burton's I don't want to see that in the engine bay you just want to keep it as clean as I can simple as I can so to do it I've just mounted a micro switch you can see it there the micro switches are back in force whoops the overhead light just whacked the camera whoa drama drama on the workbench big deal right so 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 as the oil pressure goes into this tube it expands the tube which deflects the gauge and you can hear that switch just by bending the little tab I can set the the cut in point just some long nose pliers would adjust that for us if we needed to I've got it just about in the right position flip it round I think I can do this with one hand yeah I can right listen to this so we're just clicking just as it goes into the 10 to 15 psi pounds I can't remember what gauge is this now oh my god I forgot and then it comes in just as it enters the red there's a little bit of leeway past it we can set that how we need indeed need and indeed we can calibrate the gauge we can take this to the local hydraulic company they've got a pressure test gauge we can adjust this gauge to get it exactly right so I'll do that and um, the way to adjust the gauge there's a little tiny tab hold on let's get a pointer again little tab just here which you bend which gives you the deflection range so that's the amplifier there that fulcrum point this creates the amplification of the range the longer that was the more sensitive the gauge would be the shorter that was less sensitive so they've, they've worked it out about there little bit of room just to bend it there if you wanted to to get your zero position on the dial indeed we've done it just below red I would actually like red to be actually active some pressure in it at red probably 5 psi or is it pounds per square inch I think it's pounds per square inch oh heck I think it is pounds LBS okay so the micro switch is in and that's it that saves us having to route wires into the engine bay and then there's just enough room for it to fit inside this case I checked that before I built it in that goes a little hole at the top for the wires to come out we can now this would now connect to this multi-purpose gauge on one of these cables here so it's all starting to come together mp3 radio buried there in all the mess okay but we're making good progress in the mess so that's it you get in a little bit closer for an overhead shot light down trying to give you as much detail as I can I know a lot of people ask I can just show a little bit closer how he actually did that so there you go just a little bit of Vero board glue gun for this on a large surface area it's very grippy Vero board with it having the perforated holes tends to grip good can't see that breaking away if it did break away it would go to default on so you'd know it broke but I doubt it's everything there's no force on that we're done it's time to put that away we can wire that nearer the time I just want to make sure that everything's operational so I've now done fuel I've now done oil all I've got to do now is temperature so temperature for the next gauge okay on the bench is the temperature gauge and we're now fitting the warning lamp for that so we've got another pair of optos in let's see if I can get in let's see if the camera will nicely focus it should do this is a beautiful new camera courtesy of Lee I would imagine that will pick up any second now you'll get a lock on there we go and you can see the two optos 
an infrared emitter and a receiver and I'm now going to place a power feed onto the terminal of the temperature gauge and that will make this little bar that I've fitted underneath can you see that now break into the light beam and that creates our alarm condition at the high end of the temp gauge what that'll do is it'll latch so once that breaks it'll stay permanently latched so the temperature gauge won't go um, warning lamp won't extinguish till you turn the ignition off so that locks on because it does actually pass right through the beam if you took if you had full really really overheat I mean you'd have to go over the red so there now would actually lose it goes right through the beam I mean you could make a bigger uh, paddle light beam braking paddle but I don't want to overweight the um, the indicator bar the paddle bar because it'll vibrate the needle too much I mean, that's quite short as it is that's a little bit of zip tie would you believe melted through into the bottom of the needle so you can see it going away now as the gauge cools down and there's enough room luckily under the gauge for us to install this system as it deflects away we'll do it one more time we'll go up and you'll see it break the beam again in it goes I think that's going to be pretty reliable and stable and you'll see here on the logic probe it's it'll go through the beam it's right past it so it'll go out for a while as it comes back in any second now now it's in the zone as it cools down it'll come back on well that would have latched the relay by now anyway and locked on a permanent alarm condition so that's that theory does work if we didn't want to use a comparator voltage comparator um, I have ordered some and I'll build two we'll cover all bases because I'll, co I'll do two versions and then I'll try the comparator as well it's obviously easier to do well this is now built and then um, I'll vary the voltage because I can vary the voltage on the power pack here and I'll simulate low voltage or fluctuating voltage and if the voltage comparator stays steady and consistent I may use it but this system I would imagine it's pretty reliable. Those optos run for a long time. They run forever. They hardly ever break. So both gauges are done. The oil gauge is done. The amp gauge doesn't need any warning on it. So that would. We are now in a position where all gauges have got outputs. If we want to feed into that multifunction lamp, so I could wire it all up if I wanted to. That was the hardest job. Just check cracking the the actual system or process of doing it. I think I've done it using some optos I'll call it a day for tonight, that was a long haul so the gauges then, the warning lamps for the gauges should all be done so here we are all tidied up and finished on the MP3 so we're gonna call it a long one, sorry to put you through two hours worth of hardcore electronics I think it's for the true fans only that was alright so that's all done and we can do all the things that we said Okay, we're going through and we've sorted out the albums and everything. Now I know what that MP3 stick was. That's the least of my worries with the MP3 stick. All right, and the artifacts on the screen in terms of the flickering display. I don't see it, you do. It's to do with the frame rate on the camera, of course, and um, different exposure levels on the camera generate it um, more or less degree to, to more or less degrees. Uh, yeah, if I turn this light off and the camera tries to drop focus, it'll affect it. But anyway, that's irrelevant. So we're all we're all running. The Bluetooth device is really. And then uh, we can run that. It's all nicely wired up as well. We've got a harness built for it. There, neat. It's got all the connectors to plug us in. We're wired for sound. One MP3 system done. Uh, illumination's good not too bright but just enough dial illumination that doesn't show up on the camera but trust me on this one it is nice okay so that's that one along here I just started these gauges and now we're really finished I've saved you the pain of actually building this um, it got reasonably in depth two modules here all to do with controlling this warning lamp and here's the warning lamp the multifunction we've already 
covered that in the video okay but it's running and it's finished we're currently showing a low fuel alarm there we've got a dimmer circuit built in now this wire here when you connect it to the side lights will reduce the current to the lamps except for the oil and except for the temperature overheat we've added a bulb temperature overheat and we've, we've fitted the sensors into the gauges I'd started this but um, I didn't, fin didn't film the whole amount of work simply because I was uh, going uh, developing as I went on I was kind of like just research and development as we went on but it's all completed and th those optos there are now wired in to the control board and the gauges run totally independently of the electronics of the car so this is a self-contained system the oil pressure just uses the micro switch which I've fitted you can just see it's a micro switch there that's just set and that's running if I, if I was to connect up the oil pressure lamp in fact we could probably do it with one hand I don't see why not that just clips in we'll get an oil warning coming straight in and there we go that one as I say does not dim in the in the dark but the fuel one will do because that's how you'd want it if I get a 12 volt feed coming up with my right hand into screen for the 12 volt feed for the fuel light dim down watch connecting it up yeah a click that's because I was sparking it there so that's a lot dimmer and that's all that does and it also applies to the Bluetooth wire and it also applies to the frost sensor there's frost let's see this is already covered fuel is low but if we if we fool the gauge, there's the fuel gauge. I mean, I could connect 12 volts to this, and it'd actually work in real time. But I can move it a little bit. It shouldn't really do it with your fingers. It's not the best thing to do with a gauge. But let's take the oil light off. It's a tricky one, and with the oil light disconnected. I'm going to just show you the sensor, the opto beam on the fuel gauge, just right in front of you there. You see a little paddle fitted. I've come up with an improvement on that if I ever had to do this again, but that paddle there, it's just soldered to the base of the needle. It doesn't affect it in any way. You might think that it causes vibration on the needle, but I, the gauges vibrate anyway. Let's just get a normal gauge. I don't think it really does a lot. I think you're gonna get you get that anyway so look that one's shaking too <laughs> that one won't shake because that one is oil pressure they're, they're rock solid they're mechanically linked something like this I meant see look so they do shake I think it's affecting it there's a bit of cantilever on there if we just break the beam or let the beam make itself the fuel light goes out and you'll hear a click of the relay I can just probably I can probably move it you can just hear the relay going as the opto breaks and that just dis interrupts the feed to the gauge the indicator bulb so that's how these work there's no actual electrical connection into the car it's a totally self-contained warning system and again on the temperature we have the same idea but this time the light beam on the temperature gauge is further out and what happens is it swings into it it's different on this gauge because we get actual a latching situation let me get a an instrument to break the beam spin it round if it will the wire is trying to 
flip it back and the radio is just in the way the light beam is just here what happens with no te over temp warning at the moment let's disconnect the fuel sensor because I've put them on these little multi plugs so I'll take the fuel off, no I won't because I can't do it with one hand hold on with the fuel gauge out of the way and disconnected we have no warnings coming up on the bulb let's take this across right in front of our eyes of the lamp so you get them both in shot if I were to now break the light beam, so in other words, the temperature's risen up to the hot, um, dangerous point into the red, this little arm inside there that I've attached will break the light beam and will get a warning coming up, and we have a warning coming up. That warning follows the same pattern as the oil, it's in the same um, earth return circuit on the IC inside here so you get the triple flash on it because it's like your engine's gone into the red and it is set so that the needle's in the red right at the end of the gauge so I would want to know about that and I wouldn't want it whereby if it starts to cool down the light goes back off it's, it's one of them where you're meant to pull over and turn everything off and investigate that so this now locks on even though that gauge is now unbroken again it actually it's a self latch so the relay inside this unit is a self latching setup it's transistorized because these optos need a transistor driven relay they can't power relay direct you've got to pump through a little transistor that transistor latches on itself with um, just a, a feedback resistor and it locks onto its base current and it sticks on and it's used the same earth return warning lamp as the oil if you had the oil also connected you actually get oil winning the battle so it actually comes up uh, coloured red let's do that in we go everyone's got colds in we go just there uh, I'm reconnecting and now the warning is it's a mixture of the orange and the red but the red takes really the, uh, the precedent so either of those signals you're pulling over you're stopping you're looking at your gauges they don't need to dim in the dark because you wouldn't be continuing the journey anymore you'd be you'd be out because an overheated engine is stopped straight away an oil light is stopped straight away rest of the warning lamps can carry on driving therefore they are operated on the dimmer circuit two more wires there one's a bluetooth hookup one's the, the uh, the black ice sensor for black ice so you want to know when black ice is out there like minus one because you're going to hit a patch of black ice especially with the, the type of driving that we're doing in these cars where it's um, unknown roads uh, and possibly untreated roads and uh, country roads so that's why black ice to me was an important sensor to have if you want to see it in we can just connect it up to the feed and there it is so greens flashing for black ice and it also dims down as I say so if that was to connect to 12 that would be half current you can set the actual dim level of them I've made it so that you can there's some little holes in the side of the top box that top box is the dimming control circuit box and some little pot adjusters in there just a little um, watchmaker screwdriver and you're in and you can set the actual dim level of it for night time so you can set it exactly to suit okay so that concludes two subsystems done. We're going to wrap this video now because it's a long one. Sorry about the length of the film. All done, all pluggable in. Electric aerial hookup point there. Ready. Everything ready. All the gauges plug in. So we can put these into the cluster. And then feed the loom into the car. And it's a separate sub-loom. Nothing to do with the main car. It just has two points. A power pickup point and a side light pickup point. So just back with just three cables you're into the car so you're not damaging the car's wiring loom you're not building it in it's its own self-contained pack that we've built so two boxes one does is the sequential controller and the transistorized relays for the optos the other box is simply a dimming circuit it just um, reduces the current to the leds i'd ran out of space and i was hoping to get it all in one small box 
but I come up with this idea of these trim pots to adjust the nighttime driving levels to get it exactly right and just in case I was fiddling around with re resistors to try and get the, the dimness but it's surprising how much um, light comes out of these even when you think you've dimmed them down they're still possibly too bright in the cabin so I could set them also each colour LED has different characteristics so the same resistor doesn't serve all so that's why I've done three individual trim pots to adjust the current on the red sorry on the green the yellow for low fuel green for the um, green for the oh black ice green for the black ice yellow for the fuel and blue for the Bluetooth so if, so, if I was on a, on a phone call or the Bluetooth's active um, the reason that I have it is it's sometimes my phone doesn't hang on the Bluetooth and other times you've got feet, uh, devices connected to the car that basically shows that a call's in progress could be used for something else if you wanted it's there it's a blue LED okay but they all dim down differently so just to get them to all be the same level you've got them trim pots so that's it that's two modules a wiring harness self containers say just two two feeds and then that's it or oh, 5 volt regulator here because the optos themselves require a 5 volt feed not a 12 volt feed it's just the nature of the, the optos that we fit inside the gauges and just to recap the reason that the gauges had optos in was that we don't interfere with the car's electrical system and load the gauges in any other way these range from sort of 0.1 volt up to about 3 volts for full deflection and I just was wary of connecting um, comparator circuits into that and interfering with the electrics I just thought I'd give it a try just to see it wasn't that difficult to fit the opto breakers and I just thought it was a nice neat system which made um, made it quite good. I mean, you, you can get, as I've said this earlier, you can get a unit which will bolt a strap across those two pins and measure the, the voltage. But I found them to be erratic in operation when my battery voltage was, was rising, especially when you when you got a large voltage drop with the um, full quad high beam active. It would it would throw signals and you'd get odd flashes coming up. I thought, don't I want something that's much more stable. And this can't do that because you're talking about the the bimetallic strip it's got a, a lovely damping action okay you don't even get any um, chatter across the opto once it breaks that's it, it breaks because of the damping action of the bimetallic strip so i found it just suited what i wanted a lot better than those comparator circuits you can get although i'm sure you can get an advanced one now that um, that will have a better hysteresis in it but for me something I've designed and built myself and I'm happy with it and I'm getting out of here. Over and out.